So Google just released the Android P beta. It's the developer preview two, and that's a demo mode for developers, but you can download it as well. Right now it's available for all Pixel devices and the following devices, the Sony Xperia XZ2, the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2S, the Nokia 7 Plus, the Oppo R15 Pro, the Vivo X21, the OnePlus 6, and Essential Phone. I wanna make sure to respect your time, so let's jump into it right after this. Hey friends, this is Brandon from This Is Tech Today, your source for honest tech reviews and how to's. So it seems like the thing that most people are interested in is the navigation. So let's check that out. So you have to enable in developer preview too. So you'll need to go to your settings and you'll be able to see some of the quick toggle icons here. It's a little bit different and they have a ability to page left and right instead of a scroll vertical option like the developer preview one. But go to your settings. As you can see here, the settings icons are more colorful than before. Click on system and click on gestures and then choose swipe up on the home button and you'll enable it there. This is not enabled by default when you install the beta. Since we're already in this gestures area, let's check out the prevent ringing option. So this allows you to hit both the power and volume up at the same time, and it'll go to vibrate. You can also mute it or it can do nothing. It's up to you. So let's check out the gestures. Swipe up to go to the app overview like this, and swipe up again to go to your actual apps. From the home screen, you can do swipe up to go to the overview, but if you do a slow swipe up, it'll go straight to your apps. This doesn't seem to work when you're actually in an app though. So if you hold down and slide up, it just goes to the overview. Now the two swipes up to get to your app drawer is a bit annoying, but they do have some suggested apps down at the bottom that's based upon machine learning. So they're assuming that they'll make the right choice for you. We'll find out how true that is. Overall, I wish you could do the slow slide up on every single screen, not just from the home screen like this. Why is it only there? So something that I thought that was missing is the double tap to switch to your last app. But if you just swipe to your right real quick, it'll go to your last app. Along the lines of that gesture, if you swipe from left to right, you'll have a horizontal scroll wheel. This seems to be catered a bit more to right-handed users. I'm a left-handed user, even though I'm primarily right-handed. So it's a little bit awkward having it over here on this right side. Something that's really interesting that you can do in the app overview is copy and paste. And if you can see this, it has a magnifying option when you select text now. So that's really cool and Android P. I can't seem to find the close all option. If you happen to know where that is, go ahead and leave some comments down below. In order to access the split screen option, just click on the icon at the top and the option shows up there. I do really like a lot of the animations here. So if you go back, it'll swipe down. And if you go forward to something, you'll swipe up. So it's really smooth. A lot of really great things here. Like, oh, look at that. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, I'm a fan. So some of the volume rocker changes is if you move it up here, it'll adjust the media volume, not the ringer volume. You can toggle between the different options for your ringer just by hitting this top icon or hit the settings icon. So like we mentioned before though, if you have that certain setting enabled, if you hold down both the power button and the volume up button, it'll go straight to vibrate. There you go. And in the area, if you hold down the power button, the screenshot option will pop up. So you hit that, takes a screenshot, and then you can click on edit. And you can do things like resizing it or even writing on it. It's pretty neat. I hope they add more features onto this though. So one of my favorite features is the ability to rotate device even though you don't have the rotation feature enabled. So if you rotate, this little icon pops up in the top right corner. And if you tap it, it goes into horizontal mode. And it seems like there are some graphical glitches there, but Overall, it works pretty well. Whoa, I'm getting some weird glitches here. So great news on the lock screen, you'll be able to see the battery percentage at the bottom. And then there are little icons here that you can look at. And then this is what your notifications look like. So now there are smart replies in most of your notifications. So if you swipe down it, it'll give you a couple different options that you can just click on and it'll reply with that. Apparently there's something about the audio improving. I'm not sure how to test it out, but one thing I did find is that in the stock camera app, you still can't use an external microphone. Kind of weird, I don't understand it. They also added an image to the color profile screen so you can see what the different settings look like. So if you know how to go to the developer options, there's an ability to look at the different cutouts or the notches. So if you click on this, it looks a little bit different than the developer preview one. There's a corner display cutout, which looks a little bit weird. There's a double display cutout, so the top one and the bottom one, don't like that either. And then a tall display cutout. 
I hate this. So in a quick toggle screen, you don't have the down arrow option to see the different options that are available for things like your Wi-Fi. You actually have to hold down and then it'll take you to that screen. And there's no system UI tuner, which is kind of a bummer. There's two other machine learning features that I want to point out. One's called the adaptive battery. In order to access that, you go to your settings, go to battery, and then click on adaptive battery. So it limits battery for apps that you don't often use. The other one is adaptive brightness. So if you go to display and click on adaptive brightness and then turn it on, and what's happening here is when you are using the phone and you manually adjust the brightness in certain contexts, it'll start learning about that and adjusting that for you. So some of the big features in terms of self-care are not included on the beta program yet. It's a dashboard app timer and wind down features. So let me just read off about them real quick. So the new dashboard, for instance, shows you how you're spending time on your device, including time spent in apps, how many times you've unlocked your phone, and how many notifications you've received. App timer lets you set time limits on apps and will nudge you when you're close to your limit and then gray out the icon to remind you of your goal. The new do not disturb mode silences not just the phone calls and notifications, but also the visual interruptions that pop up on your screen. And to make it even easier to use, we've created a new gesture. If you turn your phone over on the table, it'll automatically enter do not disturb, so you can focus being present. Finally, wind down will switch on nightlight when it gets dark and it'll turn on do not disturb and fade the screen to grayscale at your chosen bedtime to help you remember to get to sleep at the time you want. That's super cool. From what I hear, it's going to come out later on this summer. And if you want to check out the Easter egg, this is what it looks like. What do you think Android P will be called? Go ahead and leave your comments down below. So overall, I think the Android P beta is really cool and there's a lot of neat features about it. It's super fast and snappy, but there's a couple of different things here and there that are a bit quirky that I feel that are a few steps back. They include some of the features in the quick toggles where you have to go through an extra menu or the extra swipes up in order to get to your app drawer or how split screen is hidden. It's kind of weird. So if you want to enroll in the beta, there's a link down below in the description. Just keep in mind, it is a beta. So there are some bugs here and there. And if you find anything else that you think is interesting, go ahead and leave it down below in the comments. So there are many other things that are coming out with Android P that were released in the developer preview one. If you want to check out my video on all those features, go ahead and click the video off to the side. I have more videos coming. So if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a video. And if you'd like to help out the channel, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and leave some comments down below to let me know what features you like the most. Thanks for watching. This is Tech Today, your source for honest tech reviews and how to use. Until next time.